So I guess the only place to start is that it's been announced that the 2021 EIHL season has been unanimously decided to be suspended. So was that inevitable given the current circumstances that we find ourselves in? I think unfortunately so, Dan, at the moment, because we put out a statement, I think it was a couple months ago, saying that we needed a minimum of eight weeks notice in order to start the season. The plan was that we'd bring the players in in November for some pre-season and then the whole the league season itself would kick off with the Magic Five weekend on December the 5th. So basically we've hit the eight weeks sort of to mid-November uh, limit and unfortunately I would suggest that the news flow over the last couple of months hasn't really been any more positive. And then later on in that press release it says that some teams would commit to playing in January stroke February. Would Nottingham be one of those teams? Oh, most definitely, for sure. And what, um, and what kind of plans would they potentially be? Well, I, it, it would obviously depend a little bit on, on who else was committed to playing. I think quite a few teams would wish to play. I, I can't speak for all the other teams. Um, I suppose we're probably, realistically, I think what would probably be not a bad idea is some sort of um, maybe extended playoffs kind of set up where we might be able to play some sort of uh, few games against each other, whoever's in it, and then maybe the winners could progress to some sort of playoff final weekend. Um, but I, get, I think a lot of it would depend down on how many teams there were. And then as, the press, and as you read the press release as it goes on, it says that the, t the, the league has been speaking to the secretary to the department, they're speaking to the Department of Culture, Media and Sport. What conversations have gone on with the government? Well, quite a few. I, I'm, I'm not part of that group that have been having the chats. Um, I think that's predominantly been, uh, mainly Mike Hicks, the director of hockey, has been doing that. It's all to do with, you know, uh, return to play protocols, safety protocols in the building, um, the same sort of stuff that most professional well, sports that are involving uh, desiring to have an attendance have been complying with obviously it it's a very moving target at the moment dan and i think that's why we've chosen to use the word suspend um obviously the last week or so the news flow has not been great but hopefully um things might improve somewhat over the next few weeks maybe month or so um th there's going to be a lot of pressure put on the government from the live events industry, including the sports industry, especially, I would have thought, um, football and rugby. And you mentioned attendances. That's what the big thing is, isn't it? It's getting the people into the building to watch the games. Yeah, I mean, we're, for, for all those listening, we're all the teams in the Elite League Ice Hockey, all of them, without doubt, are utterly dependent on fans attending games for their revenues. Um, whether that is probably, from some teams, it's probably as high as 90 plus percent of their revenues. Probably even for some of the teams who have pretty good sponsorship flows, um, it's probably still a minimum, I would guess, of 75%. Um, so, yes, unfortunately, we're a sport relying on fans watching. It's, as we know, it's a great sport to watch. Um, so we, we need the fans back in the building. That's the bottom line. And then speaking of the fans, obviously because of the way the schedule worked out last year, the season ticket holders lost out on five games that were remaining on the season ticket. What is it? And in the past, that's obviously been it's roll, rolling them over to the next season when teams have folded and things. That's always been the done thing. Is that that going to be going ahead when exactly Isaac returns? Right. Exactly. Same protocol we'll be following, and it be just rolled on to whenever. Please God, we can restart playing. Um, and, and I, you know, commend all the fans for all the support that they've given us over the very difficult last six odd months, and for all the support from the fans and especially also our sponsors. You know, going forward, it, look, it's tough for everybody, absolutely everybody. You know, yes, it, it's especially tough for us because we're closed down, but it's tough for everyone out there. Um, so. It's very sympathetic to everyone's situation. And then fans will have noticed from all 
it's happening to all teams that players who were playing here last season are moving on to different places in Europe and things. I know when you spoke to the BBC, you were saying that the on ice team was still talking to players about, you know, they could like there was agreements in place that they could go away and you were talking to them still and keeping in regular dialogue with them. That's all part of those agreements, isn't it? That the guys are going away and playing in other places. Correct. Uh, and with the, hopefully the possibility of coming back to us if we restart. But I think, you know, we've been totally upfront and honest with all the players right from the start. Maybe we've been, at the time, it might have appeared that we were a bit um, pessimistic, but it's turned out that we were probably realistic. We want players to have the opportunity to obviously play, earn a living, etc., cetera, um, wherever they can. And, and there's no way we want them to just, you know, watch whilst our season gets delayed, delayed and delayed. So we, Guy, I think, has been very, very good in building up that sort of um, trust and honesty with players and lots of new players out there who were, you know, prospective new signings for this season. Um, so that hopefully when we eventually we do restart, we can hit the ground running and we have lots of goodwill from the player and agencies all around the world. And then is the plan going forward now just waiting to see what comes out with the government government advice? Yes, I mean, that, that really is it, Dan. Um, there's nothing much we can do. Um, you know, for all the people listening, um, I, I'm, it's exceedingly obviously upsetting for us. It's especially upsetting for all the people that own and manage um, live event venues. Obviously, the Nottingham Arena, which has been, um, as a, you know, is a fabulous home for us, um, is starved of any events. Um, and, and we're exceedingly keen and eager to start as soon as we can. Um, not just for our own sake and for the sake of fans, but I think it would be really good for the city and especially for the building. So we're very keen to start. I think the statement made it perfectly clear. In order to start, not only do we need at least eight weeks notice, like we've always said, but we need absolutely some good guidance about who's allowed in the building. And with the sort of capacities that we rely on to be able to put our product on the ice, which is sort of 80 to 90% capacity, it's just a non-starter unless there is some kind of government assistance for us to be playing at very reduced capacities in the building. Right, well, thank you for your time, Neil. I'm sure this has been helpful for everybody. No, thank you, Dan. And I'd like to say to everyone, thank you, like I said, for your support. And, and we're, we're all roaring to get back because it's going it's, to... It's going to feel very, very unusual not to have, you know, ice hockey to follow all through the winter months. So I'm, I'm pretty sure all the fans will feel the same as me. We're, we're desperate to start up, be up and running. And I just hope it's as, as soon as we can, I can assure everyone we will.